Today on FPV 101, we're going to be talking about how to properly comply with FAA regulations. And then we're going to be joined by U.S. Air Force pilot, Captain Steven, who will tell us about becoming a U.S. Air Force pilot and the importance of safety protocols. In order to fly your drone in accordance with federal regulations, you're going to firstly need to register your drone and yourself as a pilot with the FAA. Commercial pilots will need to register for and pass the difficult Part 107 test. But recreational pilots can easily register for and pass the FAA's recreational small UAS safety test in under 15 minutes. This test, known as TRUST, is a collaboration between the FAA and the drone industry and is designed to bring a drone safety education to recreational drone pilots. A recreational pilot, as you might have already guessed, is someone who flies only for fun. So if you're looking to fly for work, payment, or as part of any business, you're going to need to obtain a Part 107. Links to both of these paths can be found on the FAA's Drone Zone website and can be found at faadronezone.faa.gov. Obtaining a trust certificate demonstrates that you as a drone pilot understand the regulations, operating requirements, and procedures to safely fly a drone. The multi-part quiz covers a range of topics from where you can fly and airspace restrictions, obtaining authorization for controlled airspace, and safety protocols for flight operation, including community-based organization safety guidelines, pre- and post-flight equipment checks, rules on visual line of sight, registration guidelines, and pre-flight knowledge of any automated drone features. Now that may sound like a lot, but don't start to sweat it just yet. The test is multiple choice, and because it's meant for educational purposes, you can go back and re-answer any questions that you may have answered incorrectly. After obtaining your certificate for recreational flying, you're going to want to make sure to print it out or keep a digital copy on you at all times while flying. Today on FPV 101, we have the pleasure of having Captain Steven with us of the U.S. Air Force, and we're going to be talking about some of the relationships between the Part 107 for drones and some of the licensures you may need for flying an actual aircraft. Captain Steven, how are you doing today? Excellent. Thank you for having me today. So, Captain Steven, can you please tell us a little bit more about how you trained to become a U.S. Air Force pilot? Absolutely. I had the wonderful opportunity after graduating from the Academy to head on over to Pueblo, Colorado for eight weeks of training where you actually learn to fly the DA-20 and what it means to tactically fly both not only takeoff and landing as well as aerobatics and everything that goes into the emergency procedures process because at the end of the day that is one of the most important things that we do is not only fly but understanding what happens if something doesn't always go as planned. Sure, how to mitigate some of the risks. Absolutely, risk mitigation as you can understand. While we have fantastic maintainers here in the Air Force, objects always have the potential to have something go awry. So we as pilots do our best to mitigate those risks so that we can quickly take proper action. In regards to the safety protocols with airspace, as it is with man flying for flying RPAs, it is vitally important you follow all the safety rules and regulations. Once you get your part 107 licensure in order to fly a quadcopter or UAV, it is vitally important that you don't overfly the nearest airport, major sporting events or things like that. Uh, we always want to follow any applicable NOTAMs or TFRs, notice or notice to airmen, and TFRs are temporary flight restrictions. So it's vitally important that we follow these guidelines and rules, which protects everyone, not only on the ground, but as well as in the air. Thank you so much for being with us today, Captain Steven. Thank you so much for having me. Look forward to seeing you all around. Tune in for the next episode of U.S. Air Force FPV 101.